In daylight, our big blue marble is all land, oceans, and clouds, but the night is electric. Seen from space, our planet comes alive with light. This new view of the Earth's night lights is a composite of data acquired by the polar orbiting SUMI NPP satellite. Aboard the satellite, a newly designed infrared instrument called VIRS, which is able to collect what scientists say is a remarkably detailed view of the Earth at night. In some places, city lights resemble solitary stars in the night sky. In other places, dense clusters of galaxies. The satellite can even distinguish brightly lit boats along Egypt's Nile River. And the massive flames from gas flares produced as byproduct of oil and gas exploration in the Middle East. As the satellite passes over the darkness of the Himalayas, it shows how human settlement is bound by natural borders even political borders are starkly visible in this view of North and South Korea. And in a line of fishing boats that dot the Yellow Sea. But not all light is electric. Glowing just as bright, flaming wildfires burn across Australia. This new view of the Earth at night offers a unique perspective for exploring the many places in which we live and seeing the impact of human populations around the world, no matter how far or how bright their lights shine. When gazing at images of the Earth from space, many people often wonder about the space station itself. That is to say, the habitat to which the cameras are attached to. Most people have never really seen what it's like on the inside. So I thought it would be really interesting to have a quick tour. Hey, what's up? Alright, welcome to the International Space Station. Here's a tour. We're starting right now in Columbus. And if you look on this little iPad right here, there's a picture of station. And right here, that's Columbus. So we're on the starboard side kind of front area. And that module right there, that's what we're in right now. As you can see, it's of course the European laboratory, but it's not just European. We also have uh, NASA racks in here, NASA payloads in here too at the same time. So it's actually quite a new stuff over here. This is the email, and uh, Alex will have to tell you all about that because that's his uh, uh, little bailiwick. But it's actually pretty cool because it talks about the magnetic levitation, and I just think that's a cool sounding thing. Uh, I don't know exactly what it's going to do, but it sounds great to me. And. Uh, over here you can't, it's hard to see again everything, but we were grow, growing the, uh, in here we were growing, that's where we grew the lettuce, is right in there. Note two is this section right here, it's this front little piece uh, that fits on the station. So it's actually where the shuttle used to front, and this black part is where the shuttle used to dock to. And so right now, there's nothing of course is docking to that, but we're in this area right after there. If you're looking here, these aren't too uh, big at all. You can take a quick look in here. I'll jump in here real quick. So, we have a sleeping bag attached to the wall. The way I like to do it is I just have it attached here at one point and one point up here so I can put my feet right up here when I'm sleeping. And I kind of do it in a sense of, uh, of this position, uh, like this, and I'm kind of curled up in a little bit in a the semi on my side sleeping position which I like to do back on earth and it kind of works out pretty well it gives me that same feeling uh, almost but it works well for me 
And then when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you see is your laptops. I got one that connects to the internet, which works like 50% of the time. And then I got another one that does our LAN up here, which gives us our schedule, all the other information, our email, everything we need to do to work up here. And that's what that one is. And we also have an iPad, as you can see, and that's also up there. And that's, again, for all sorts of work or for watching movies or something like that on. That's what it's good for. Uh, again, though, that's, it's actually not a bad setup. I know it's small, but really it uh, works out well. We don't really need much more room up here. All right, we're back in Node 3. Going to head Nader into the cupola. Got some sunlight now. And this is our best viewing spot on the world. Come on in, straight out of the way. There you go. You see, we have full of cameras up here. And of course, robotic workstation, just like in the lab. And there's the beautiful Earth. So we can hang out. You see the arm? I don't know if you can see the arm there. It's set up. It's on the top, or sorry, on the bottom of node two. It's connected to it right there. And that's the position that we use to grapple the cargo vehicles, SpaceX and Cygnus and HTV. And it goes in right on node two just a little bit forward of where it's, where it's grappled to Node 2 is where we berth those vehicles. And if you come right here, then you can see to the right is the Japanese, the gem, which we'll go to shortly, along with the exposed facility out there. That's part of the Japanese modes too. We have experiments that are outside, and we have a Japanese arm that can move those around and do uh, work on those. And you can see right now, if a little bit more to the right, you'll see actually a launcher that we've been launching small satellites off of right there, which is kind of cool. Uh, that's kind of nice, nice to watch those go by. If you go back to the left over here, you're going to see the PMM, which is our storage vehicle. It's right there. Made by the Italian Space Agency, as you can see, Hazi. As you go farther aft, you'll see first is a Progress. That no, that's my spaceship. It is. That is Tonto's progress right there. Oh, it's a Soyuz. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> oh, he's giving you a hard time. He's a cargo, so, you know. <laughs> no, it is a Soyuz. It is a Soyuz because it says so on there. And it is a, uh, it's the one that uh, uh, the 39S crew came up on. And then behind that is a progress. And uh, not just a Russian cargo vehicle. And as you go around, that's pretty much uh, what you can see out here. You got solar arrays, of course, on each side. If you go over this side, all the way over, you can see the solar array on the port side. Here you kind of view what it is like from outside out here on the station. But this is the best part out here, though, is looking down at Earth. We try to do that as much as possible. Unfortunately, we don't get near as much time as we'd like. They make us do work. Let's go on back. What we're gonna do, we're gonna head to the gym because we missed that at the beginning. So we'll head there and then that'll be finish up the USOS segment. either for our drink bags or for if you need to rehydrate some food. We have a place we get water. It's either just kind of room temperature water or it's hot water. So this is the location. It's called the PWD, Portable Water Dispensable Dispenser. Potable water dispenser. I knew that. It probably is portable too, but not that good. So but you just put whatever it is into the adapter. Tell it how much water you want. And hit the button. It's pretty easy. Even I can do it. 
Now, if you do want some cool stuff, we have these, uh, it's called Merlins, but they're kind of set for refrigerators, but we look at them. Then we have stuff in there. Our main uh, sauce right there is Sriracha, and we live off of that, at least I do. That right makes it, everything taste better. It's done, it fills up. Yeah. And the uh, nice thing about these things, these straws, of course, it's got a little clamp on there, so if I didn't have that on there, I'll show you real quickly. If that's just off on there, the water pressure, it just starts coming on out. There we go. Let's go into the gym. So we're going back, actually, right now, back to the note two. Starboard. <laughs> Starboard or port, either one. Either port, it's actually port. I was backwards, I was going backwards, so I was going the wrong way. Again, uh, crystallization observatory, there's all sorts of science around here. And I don't even get, I haven't even got to play with this one, the fluids physics experiment facility. I haven't even got to play with this one yet. Uh, and so there's lots of science here that I didn't get to even play with up here that's going on. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I won't get to, but uh, there's so much science going on. Well, we have over 200 experiments going on up here while we're here, and it's impossible to know them all. Uh, but uh, I hope to get to work with at least half of them. We continue on, we go for more and more. And this is the area we also do spheres, which we like to do. So they set up this little area here. There's beacons that set up around here that the spheres, these little satellites, which I'll show you here real quickly, uh, we can uh, control these things through software. And they actually stay in this area and they have navigation and control uh, with them. And they can do all sorts of uh, different kind of uh, science with them. Just to get you an idea what it's like to uh, in the storage areas. So here's a sphere. It's got a uh, little CO2 cartridge in it, so it's, it has little jets on it. And this thing can then fly around the station. We're getting it set up here to actually put a, a basically a smartphone on it. Uh, and, and it's going to then use its uh, camera and map the inside of the station and then use that as its uh, guidance uh, navigation and go ahead and fly a trajectory through station. I'm looking forward to that one too. I think that's going to be really cool science. But again, this is the area, main area for spheres that we use because it has right now the beacon set up to keep the navigation system right here and it knows where it is as long as it's flying right here. I'm looking forward to the upgrade though when we can go anywhere with these things. If we go up, which is a fun thing to do, this is actually called the JLP and it is a Japanese logistic uh, module. We, uh, it's a storage area for uh, Japanese equipment and U.S. equipment too. And it's really actually quite nice in here. It's one of the quietest places on station. Uh, but it has good storage, nice place to be. And our little, uh, if, you, if you can't look out the, uh, the cupola and you want to see Earth, you can come in here and get your little view of Earth. Hey, you know what? Come back up and let me go to the front of the gem and you can do your... Uh... Oh, okay. Sounds good. I'll show you the dismount. The, 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 the JLP dismount. Yes, exactly. Just remember you got an SSU down here. Thank you. Give me one more minute. Swanee has perfected this over time. We'll see if you can pull it off. Okay. Ah, he missed it. That was still pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. Didn't stick the landing. But that's the JLP dismount we like to do when we come out of the JLP. It, it, as you notice, it's kind of fun to move around up on station. So that's the uh, Japanese portion. Again, it quite, it's, a, it's a great lab, I really like it. It's one of the cleanest places on the station to work, and uh, it's always fun to work there. Uh, it is still fun to be up here, no doubt about it. You, this is the, the accidental trip we can do.
My name is Robert Sepper. I would like to thank you for your time, for joining me, and for sharing my videos. Thank you very much, and see you next time.